inverse functions. Let f and g be two functions such that f of g of x is equal to x for every x in the domain of g and g of f of x is equal to x for every x in the domain of f. This is a formal definition of inverse functions. Um, um, there are different ways to find the inverse function and to look at the inverse function. We will do it algebraically. We will do it by uh, exchanging the domain and range. Um, they switch. And we will do it by graphing over the line y equals x. So the function g is the inverse of the function f. And our notation is this little f to the negative 1. But you never say f to the negative 1. You read it as f inverse. So f of f inverse is equal to x. And f inverse of f of x is equal to x. So the domain of f is equal to the range of f inverse. So your x's and your y's switch in inverse functions and vice versa. Okay. Point by point, to find the inverse, just switch the x's and y's. Graphing f and f inverse, the ordered pairs of f are x, y, and the ordered pairs of f inverse are y, x. So your domain and your range have just switched. Here's a picture of inverse functions. The graph of f inverse is a reflection of the graph of f about the line y equals x. So y equals x is your line that goes through uh, 0, 0. And it just flips across there. So here is your f of x for this example. Our f of x is x cubed plus 2. So here's your cube graph. And it's raised up 2. And g of x, which is the inverse of f of x, is cube root of x minus 2. Remember your cube root function goes across and it's moved over to the right. But they just flip across. They're a mirror image across the line y equals x. I want to go back. Um, to the formal definition for just a minute and show algebraically um, that these two we just looked at are inverses of each other. All right, so we will do f of g of x or f composed of g of x and it should equal x. So if we do it algebraically, the g is going inside the f. So we'll write the f. And g is going to go inside of f. And our g is cube root x minus 2. That's what you're plugging in. Remember, you still have an exponent on here. And this exponent of 3 and the cube root cancel each other. So you have left x minus 2 plus 2 equals x. Right, now we'll go the other way. And we'll do g of f of x. And it should equal x. Right, so this time we're going to start with g and put f inside it. So if we start with g, we've got a cube root of x minus 2 inside the x. So we're still going to have this. We're going to put the f. So we're going to put x cubed plus 2. Now you still have this minus 2. And when we simplify this, plus 2 and minus 2 cancel out. So what we have left is cube root of x cubed cube root cancels x to the third, or the exponent, 
and that also gives us x. So it also works out algebraically with that formal definition. Don't worry, you're not going to have to prove that these are inverses. You are just going to find the inverse of a function, but I wanted you to see it once. Let's look at some problems. Uh, first they asked us to graph the reflection of this graph and it, they mean across the line y equals x. So I went ahead and drew that on for you. And so what we'll do is write our ordered pairs of this original picture. So we have 0, 2, we have 2, 3, and we have 3, 5. And we're going to switch these. So we're going to switch the x's and y's. So this will be 2, 0, 3, 2, and 5, 3. So 2, 0, 3, 2, and 5, 3. And then we can connect those. And this edge is going to go about right there, a little bit back. But you can see it flips across the line y equals x. Let's do one more. So we have uh, three ordered pairs here. We'll make a list of those. So we have um, negative 1, 0. We have negative 3, negative 2. And we have 2, 3, 4, 2. All right, and we're going to switch the x's and y's. So this will be the inverse. 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 2, 4. So um, over 0, down 1 negative 2, negative 3, and 2, 4. And we can connect those. These are supposed to be straight. Hopefully I can do it straight. Right, and you can see that flips across the line y equals x. I'll try to put it in there now. Now we're going to look at finding the inverse of a function algebraically. So here are your steps. Right. First of all, you're going to switch the f of x and you're going to write y. So replace f of x with y. You're going to switch the x and y's. And then you are going to solve for y. If this equation does not define y as a function of x, so like if you get a plus or minus, uh, then say the inverse does not exist. If f does have an inverse function, then you're going to replace the y in step 3 with this notation, f inverse of x. Right, so let's do it on this function. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this f of x and we're going to put y. So y equals x plus 4. Right. Step 2, we're going to switch the x's and y's. So this y becomes x, this x becomes y. Now we're going to isolate the y. So we're going to solve for y. We need to subtract the 4 from both sides. And if we're able to do that, which we were, then we're going to replace the y with f inverse of x. And I'm going to just switch this around so it looks like what we're used to. I'm not doing any change right there. But now I'm going to replace y with f inverse of x.
So y equals x plus 4 and y equals x minus 4 are inverses of each other. Let's look at another problem and do it algebraically. So we want to find the inverse of f of x equals x cubed minus 2. So if we go through our steps, first of all, we'll change f of x to y. Then we're going to switch the x and y's. Then we're going to isolate the y. So first we would take off this 2. It's subtracted, so we're going to add to both sides. It cancels on this side. right? And then to get rid of a cube, you would take the cube root. We really did it of both sides, and so that canceled. And now we replace y with f inverse of x. I'm just going to switch the sides. So f inverse of x equals cube root of x plus 2. Next, we have f of x equals x squared. So if we go through our steps. Uh, so y equals x squared. Switch your x and y's. So x equals y squared. And now we have to isolate y. So you're going to have to take the square root of both sides. Remember when you take the square root of both sides that you get plus and minus. And so this one is not going to be able to have an inverse because um, for every x you put in, you're going to get a positive y and a negative y. Um, so this one is not going to have an inverse. We're going to look for just a minute at our... Um, three graphs we just tried to find the inverse of. So our first one, our um, original graph was f of x equals x plus 4. It was a line and we were able to find an inverse function. Our next one was f of x equals x cubed minus 2. So our x cubed graph and it's moved down 2 and we were able to find an inverse. Our third one was f of x equals x squared, a parabola, and we were not able to find an inverse on that one. Uh, so we'll look below, and then we'll come back up to these graphs. Um, we have something called a horizontal line test. Uh, tells you whether or not you're going to be able to have an inverse. And so uh, the function f has an inverse that is f inverse if there is no horizontal line that intersects the graph of f at more than one point. Functions that pass the horizontal line test are called one-to-one -one function. A one-to-one -one function is a function in which no two different ordered pairs have the same second component. So the y's don't repeat. So only one-to-one -one functions have inverse functions. So if we do a horizontal line test on the first one, that one is okay. It is one-to-one. -one. It's going to be able to have an inverse function. If we try it on the next one, that one is okay. It's going to be able to have an inverse function. But if we try it on the parabola, even just once, we're done. It is not one-to-one, -one, and so there is no inverse function. Let's look at a few more um, and see which of the graphs uh, have inverse functions. So our first one is a parabola. We're going to do the horizontal line test, and this one fails. So it is not going to have an inverse function. 
Absolute value graph, it's upside down, but it's an absolute value graph. No inverse function, it fails the horizontal line test. Square root graph is going to be okay. If you do horizontal lines, um, it is okay. It passes, so yes, this one will have an inverse.